This is the Brighter Futures film about how research improves policy and changes people's lives. It's my great pleasure to welcome Klaus McDonald Meyer from the School of, of Computer Science and Electronic Engineering. Um, in this episode, we're talking about intelligent systems, cybersecurity, implications for robotics. So, Klaus, your expertise is in the electronic architecture of life, we could call it, the back and front office of daily living. Tell us a bit about the research and why it's so important. Thanks, Jules. Yeah, we're working on embedded and intelligent systems. And embedded systems are really all the electronic things that are surrounding us in our daily life. So anything that's effectively got a battery that's more complex than a kettle is some sort of embedded systems because it has uh, there's a computer in there that will go and direct how it operates. And one of the big challenges associated with those type of systems is because we run software in them, is to go and in, uh, ensure that the software actually does what it's supposed to do and that we get the functionality we expect from these type of systems for our daily lives. So that's one of the really big challenges to go and address when building such systems. And then it's uh, also linked to, for example, how we're building systems like robots that uh, will have to interact with physical uh, entities or have to go and deliver a certain function like dri driving us on, on, on the roads and uh, making sure that we're kept safe and that there isn't any incidents occurring. So we're at the edge of, edge of a very fast changing area of social and economic life for, that actually touches almost everybody in the world. Um, so when it works well, things are, are good, but things can also go wrong as well. And so presumably there's a, a, a strong part of uh, observation of uh, cybersecurity as well. Yes, I mean, obviously linked to some of this functionality, we're in a situation where um, there may be some unintended purposes, there may be a possibility to go and understand what people are up to by being able to compromise their privacy. So one of the big challenges we have at the moment in the space of embedded electronics and AI systems that are increasingly introduced into that space to, to develop these great new functionalities we're, we're looking forward to enjoying is to make sure that there is uh, both an assurance that the systems work the way they're intended to work and that they don't open us up to being um, spied upon or our information to be used for different purposes. And there is a big, uh, imp a really a big implement uh, implication from the fact that we have this sophisticated AI technologies now to go and analyze data. And, and there's a lot of, there's a lot of uh, actors that have a, a lot of information about the things that uh, we do and that can be used to, uh, for commercial purposes or, 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 or in other ways compromise our privacy. So it's really important that as we're moving forward with these emerging new AI technologies that we also have a balance about uh, privacy and elements about data access. And that's something which um, regulation is, is, or not, is really trying to catch up with, but it's a, it's a complex problem that, that needs to be tends to be a little be bit behind the, the actual technical and scientific development, does it? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I mean, you're in, a, in an element where uh, these technologies are being developed now. So we're at that point where, yes, we're solving the technical problems and there is this great new capabilities. And uh, we need to make sure that that policy really keeps up with uh, being able to go and maximize what we can go and get as benefits for humanity from these technologies, while at the same time we're protecting the individual and, and, and society uh, from, from an overreach of these technologies. So in your research, um, you've uh, helped spin off a couple of companies. Uh, so you've taken some of the research on, on, on cybersecurity, on embedded systems, um, a system on a chip, this kind of uh, work. Uh, could you tell us a little bit about how that happened? And obviously, some of that will be of, of uh, uh, commercial content. But in terms of ideas that come out of a university that get into a commercial space and then actually um, affect the lives of many people, how, how does how has that been working? Um, one of my premises as a as a as a researcher was always to go and work on um, problems and solve engineer, uh, engineer, problem, uh, engineer solutions that will effectively allow us to go and you know, help people in their real daily life. So one of the things we did was we've, um, as part of one of my first uh, uh, grant, um, grants from EPSRC, I've worked on a new system to go and effectively help people 
develop software for systems on chips. One of the big challenges in that space is that because um, all the electronics, all the computing sits in just one little microchip, it's very difficult to actually see how the different components of that system interact. And uh, we've built a technology that allows us to go and really deeply investigate these interactions. And as a result of that, we were able to go and have a significant um, advantage over existing technology. So that, that, that's something that uh, we commercialized. So we spun out a company from the university, just uh, three people, and grew that business uh, with the help of venture capitalists to a stage where it um, employed 50 people and um, built a product that is really now used by most mainstream chip manufacturers to go and help build uh, reliable software for these type of systems. So we see that in things like our smartphones, in uh, automotive applications, in many different um, areas now. And uh, that company um, two years ago was sold to uh, Siemens. So Siemens acquired that uh, because it's something they consider important for their um, future delivery of uh, reliable electronic uh, products. And um, We've, uh, ma we've managed to go and really come from that point where we did fundamental research to actually producing something that's really useful and valuable to go and help make better software so quite for systems. Yeah. Personally satisfying? To yes, I mean, that was, like a, that. Yeah. was a great, great, uh, great um, success to uh, a journey that had its challenges. And uh, we were very happy with uh, the outcome. And obviously Siemens uh, as a company will take that technology forward and uh, do many good things with it. With, uh, I'm involved in a, in a second startup called Metrac that uh, builds a cybersecurity solution that effectively seeks to replace stored passwords so it can generate security uh, on the fly based on the system's properties of the specific system. And that will really deal with one of the big challenges we have in modern security systems where effectively the store passwords, so you know, if the password gets compromised, you then have access, which means if you lose the password, um, the system is wide open for, uh, for being compromised. And our technology can go and play a really big um, counterpart to this to go and ensure that uh, we have security in, in, in these type of systems. We see that links actually back to uh, embedded electronic systems where um, some of the really kind of low cost uh, systems that we see things like um, you know maybe a smart toaster or something like that they often have only very rudimentary security provisions however because they're networked it's a potential gateway to both our uh, personal data or to compromise for example so a if, large we, if group we look of around devices. our home or our kitchen we find that the all the most modern that the facilities there are linked up to each other potentially yes, exactly, linked up yeah. to external systems yeah. and they look normal, but they could be subverted in some kind of way. Well, we've seen, uh, we've seen particularly with early systems, many examples where um, effectively people's smart TV was used to go and spy on people and then essentially record them using, you know, in, 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 their, in their respective living rooms. So there is a, there is a big challenge. And we, the more we have this functionality, the more we need to make sure that there is technology that helps us uh, safeguard people. So, so our IC metrics technology that we, we work on with, with Metrag is, is such a technology that really helps uh, deal with one of the big fundamental problems of uh, loss of stored credentials. So that's, that's, a, that's a technology I think we think is going to be very useful to go and help improve cybersecurity moving forward. And it also links to uh, elements of privacy. So we've seen that particularly in the early um, stages of the internet revolution and AI technology coming, we'll have more and more um, cases where there is data being captured and, and, and used. So we need to really think about how we can go and move forward in a way that will allow us to go and protect individuals by bringing in systems that, that uh, increase privacy. So for example, one of the big um, developments in my area, which is around embedded systems, is to go and instead of sending data when you when you use you know your device for example your smartphone you take pictures or uh, interact in another way is to go and do the processing locally without connecting to a cloud provider so your data will never leave your smartphone and for that we need to have really sophisticated systems that will allow us to do that actually uh, in the in the device itself rather than rather than than sending data to many different locations where it could potentially be breached. So that, that, that's, an, that's an important element of that. Yeah, and so what you've described is, is 
absolutely fundamental scientific research um, uh, systems on a chip, you know, real kind of detailed work, but also the social interface, because as, as those applications come into our daily lives, whether it's robotics or AI or smart toasters, as you mentioned, um, the, the, we're looking at that interface between the kind of social aspects and indeed the policy one. So if you were taking the thoughts that you've had, this fast moving technology space, into robotics and AI and other areas as well. What would be a couple of policy recommendations that you would make in terms of those developments now? What, what's on your mind? What concerns you? What do you think governments as a whole should be thinking about? I think from a societal perspective, I think it's really important to put some safeguards into place that will allow us to go and understand what's acceptable use of the data and the information that these systems can extract and uh, how we can go and protect the individual's privacy and, and in fact their human rights. So there is a, there is a, a really big challenge here and um, we're, we've got too much of a, a push from commercial operators on being able to harvest that data and, 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 and use it to go and um, derive commercial gain from, from, from these systems without people being aware of that. I mean, it's one thing being in a position where you know, we've all agreed to this, we've signed up to this, but it's a something rather different where we think, well, we just want to go and use our, use our new smartphone to go and take photos or, or um, communicate with our friends or colleagues. And at the same time, there is things happening in the background that we're not really that aware of. Um, so that, I think that, 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 that's going to be really a big challenge moving forward where uh, policy is, is, a, is a key factor to make sure that there's some frameworks that uh, will make sure that we can go and have this great new technology, but it's uh, guided through a path that's, kind of, that's really acceptable and uh, also takes into account the kind of uh, privacy requirements of the individual. And do you find that governments are listening to that kind of message? Or is it something that they need to be pushed into um, in terms of the policy response? And I, I suppose I'm talking about all kinds of levels, and it could be international responses as well as domestic ones. But um, it would be easy to kind of ignore those things and suppose that this is a wonderful commercial advantage and we should press ahead with it. But on the other hand, um, uh, we need to protect the rights of individuals as well. Uh, make the best of the technology in, in due course, of yeah. course. Yeah. Well, we've seen that there is uh, really a catching up kind of uh, movement from a, from a kind of you know, a government perspective uh, nationally and internationally where uh, the kind of the, the, the people's rights to their own data and uh, well, what's happening with, with data through GDPR and uh, similar mechanisms becoming, becoming uh, very mainstream now and is, is in place. But there is you know, new technologies emerging that go beyond just uh, storing individuals' personal data. It's about capability for, for example, surveillance and uh, other um, measures that will effectively allow, um, allow us um, and our data to be at, at risk. Klaus McDonald Meyer from the School of Computer Science and Electronic Engineering. Many thanks. Thank you very much, Jules. You've been watching a Brighter Futures film short. For more on how research informs policy and changes people's lives, pop over to our sister podcast, Louder Than Words.